Sam, would it inconvenience you if I took a holiday early this year? Rest up, get some sun. What about one of those pleasant little islands in the Caribbean? Goodbye, Richard. Ambassador arrives at nine. I'd rather not sweep in at the same time. I just want to get a hand, Kay. Can I help you? Mrs. Farrow is out of town for two weeks. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Patterson, but I have instructions not to give out that information. Do you want her to call you? No. Rachel! Coming! I wish to call Paris, please. 306-4353, extension 211. Yes? Good evening, Comrade Sperdlov. Extremely well, thank you. And you, Comrade? Are you enjoying your vacation? Well, it is somewhat dull, but certainly restful. If there is no pressing business, I shall be back on the 14th, as planned. There's nothing pressing, Comrade Sverdlov, but should the situation change, I will, of course, call you at once. Thank you, Comrade. Good night. General Galitin wishes to see you. How's your time next week, Richard? How about lunch at the club? Yes, uh, maybe Tuesday. I could drop Rachel off and meet you. I'll check my schedule. Have my secretary call you tomorrow. Bye bye, my dear. Now you take good care of her, Richard. She needs someone to stand up for huh? her. He's such a cold blooded swine. <sighs> I wish I'd had someone to stand up for me. You never needed anyone. No. Hard as nails. Well, you did that for me, at least. Good evening, sir. Good evening, madam. Excuse me. Who's that man? The clod. He works with Jack Loder. Oh, that frightful man. It's getting a wee bit crowded in here. Get rid of this for me, will you? Good evening, good captain. Good evening. Mrs. Patterson. Good evening, Mr. Leder. Enjoying yourselves? Oh, very much, thank good. you. Good. I don't like that man. Very few do, but he wasn't picked because of his personality. In the final analysis, it's results that count. If you consider our lead uh, policy... Uh, excuse oh. me, Colonel. Jack. Can I have a word with you? Would you excuse me, please? 
All right, Jack. What's on your mind? General Golitsyn arrived without Sverdlov. And so far, Sverdlov isn't shown up. Yes, I know. He wasn't at the Belgians last Tuesday either. I was going to call you at the office tomorrow. Where the hell is he? What's up? He's out of France. On a vacation, we assume. Ah. Well, if you gave us a bit more information, we might be able to assume something for ourselves. Sorry. It really looks like a vacation. Nothing more. It's in Barbados. Barbados? They never go anywhere for a holiday except home. They must be up to something. Setting up a rocket base. Well, the Caribbean could just be a blind. Maybe Svetlov's been recalled. Unlikely. Maybe Galitzin's being moved up. Oh, too old. Too rigid. If Sverdlov's pulling out, then his replacement is already here. And we don't know who that is. It's going to be very pretty, isn't it? I'm willing to bet there is no replacement. Sverdlov's on a holiday. But we're keeping a close check. Good morning. It seems hotter this morning. Yes, I think it is. Perhaps we will have rain. I see clouds over there. Yes, but it doesn't matter. It never lasts long. You know not to shelter under those trees. Which trees? Those trees there. They have a curious name, I can't pronounce it. But if the rains come and you stand beneath them, the water will burn your skin. They are very poisonous. Someone should have told you about it. Well, I'm afraid I haven't given anyone much chance. Yes, you have remained very much to yourself since your arrival. Being neighbors, I could not help but notice. I also came here to get away from people. You are English. Yes. Fyodor Zverdlov. How do you do? I'm Judith Farrow. <laughs> Stay out, she said. What's that his name now? He's so blinded, he's down. You take sugar? Yes, three spoons, please. What do you do at the embassy? I am a military attaché. I work with General Golitsyn. No? No. Does his name mean anything to you? No, should it? Well, he's been in Paris for nearly three years. You said you know Paris. I know someone who works there. I used to go over there sometimes for the weekend and stay with friends. I don't mix in embassy circles. Yes, they're not very exciting. Always the same faces. I would have remembered you if I'd seen you. Do you work in London? Yes, I'm a personal assistant to a man called Sam Nielsen. He's with the Home Office. Yes, I know him. Would you like a Russian cigarette? No, thank you. I promise you, it isn't drugs. Well, even if it was, you'd have to find some other way. I don't smoke. If I go away and leave you in peace, Will you have dinner with me? Yes, if you like. It would be very pleasant for me. Eight o'clock? I'll wait for you by the bar. Gentlemen, I have here a comprehensive report on how Colonel Sverdlov has been spending his holiday. So far, he has done nothing suspicious. He has been behaving like an ordinary tourist, spending a holiday out of season. He's even got himself a girlfriend. She's British, Judy Farrell. 
works for Sam Nielsen. Bloody hell! What's wrong? Sam Nielsen is in a very confidential position. Not confidential enough to involve a man as important as Werloff. One of the glamour boys could have been sent out to do that. Well, all right. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Exactly. Yeah, maybe not. I'm sceptical about coincidences. If Sverdlov has made contact with a British subject, then it's my responsibility. All right. But I think it would be less than prudent to act as if she was already passing him secrets. Uh, yeah, naturally, Colonel. I also suggest it would be less than prudent not to consider the possibility. Naturally. Pompous bastard. Does he know about Mrs. Farrell and Captain Patterson? No. <laughs> I'd like to see his prudent face when he learns that Sam Nielsen's personal assistant is also shacking up with our gallant air attaché. Well, that's a hell of a contact. Ah, for a chance like that, the Russians had bloody swim to Barbados. Had a meeting with the colonel today. Confidential? No, no. Nothing your husband won't know all about by tomorrow. Well? You know, we were talking about Patterson, Mrs. Farrell. Uh huh. And she went to Barbados. Apparently, she met Theodore Sverdlov there. And they were worried she might be passing on classified information. Good morning, Commissioner. Just thought I'd bring you up to date on Mrs. Farrow and Mr. Sverdlov. Oh, nothing very new. They continued to see each other. The last two nights they had dinner together and, as usual, went for an early morning swim. But so far, she has not invited him into her bed. We made a reservation for him tonight at the Colony Club and this morning he took her to the Bridgetown Museum. plantation, St. Peter, accused of stealing a sheep, was hanged from a tamarind tree. He protested his innocence, saying that the tree would vindicate him. Since then, the tamarind tree has borne a seed in the shape of a man's head. Isn't that extraordinary? It's just like a man's head. And you believe it? Well, there's the seed. I wonder what the owners felt like when they saw those seeds appear on the tree. You think they were worried? You think they had a conscience? Everyone has a conscience. <laughs> You don't think so? Would you say I have a conscience? Well, perhaps not a very big one, but a conscience. Your whole ideology is based on righting a basic wrong. Some people with far too much, others with nothing. Marx. Marx had a conscience. 
the expropriators will be expropriated. Is that what you're saying? In a way, yes. Well, you know when you've done something wrong. Your conscience knows. I know when I have made a mistake that is not the same. I am interested in your theories. Perhaps I am converting you to Marxism. I wonder if it's possible to visit the Haywood Plantation. And you would look for the tamarind tree. You really believe it exists? I don't know, but I'd like to try and find it. I want one of those seeds just to prove something to you. I am Russian. We are the people who invented fairy tales. Mm, like the existence of God. <laughs> you know, it is a good sign that we have many dialectic disagreements and yet get along. We are proving that it is really possible to coexist. Perhaps that's because we're on neutral territory. Too neutral. I'm optimistic. <laughs> you like me. I can feel it. Are you afraid to make love? Yes. I've just had one miserable love affair, and I don't intend to start another one. Who was he? What did he do to spoil you for me? His name is Richard Patterson. Captain Patterson? You know him? Only to speak a few words when we meet socially. He was the only man I've been involved with since my husband died. He was burned in a car accident. I was trying to work hard and get over it. I kept everybody at a distance. I was quite happy, and then someone asked me to Paris for a weekend, and I met Richard. So you became lovers? Was he a good lover? Did he please you? Yes. Don't go. Then why did it all end? Oh, he said he and his wife were separated, that he was going to ask her for a divorce. <laughs> As it turned out, he never even considered it. She's going to have a baby in a few months. So while he was loving you, he was reconciled to his wife. And in her bed as well. And you can't forgive him for making a fool of you. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm nearly finished. The worst thing about Captain Patterson is that he's really very dull. I would be much better for you because I make you laugh. Did you laugh much with him? No, I suppose I didn't. Much too serious, too intense. I find it hard to take these things as a joke, and so I don't think you would be better for me. Oh, I said nothing about a joke. Laughter is a very serious business. One should be happy in love, and laughter confirms the love and the happiness. Real love simply cannot exist without laughter. How well do you know him? He never mentioned you. Oh, he wouldn't. He doesn't encourage friendships with our people. It might hurt his career, like divorcing his wife. Couldn't you tell that it was the most important thing for him? Obviously not. That is because you are a sentimentalist. You believe in innocent slaves and miraculous tamarind seeds. Anything else wrong with me? Oh, I didn't say it was wrong. In a woman, I think it is very nice. I have a wife at home. She is a very good judge of everything. She knows exactly what is right and what is not right. She draws a line so. On this side is the Soviet Union and the party. They are right. On the other side is the capitalist world. Wrong. I am telling you about my wife now, so that you don't say afterward. You are married. You never told me. There won't be any afterward. No. Probably not now. I must go back to Paris in a few days. Please don't go. I would like to talk about myself a little bit, if you don't mind. You may be asked questions about me when you go back. By whom? Your intelligence people. What will you tell them? To mind their own business. Will you stop trying to hold my hand? You don't trust me. No, you said you wanted to talk. Yes, but please let me hold your hand. I am afraid of the darkness. Well, everybody is afraid of something. You came here to run away from your love affair. I came here because, well, because I had nothing to run away from. Do you understand that? 
No. What does it mean? I have a good career. I have a wife who is a famous specialist. She is young and nice looking. I belong to a great country and a great socialist movement which one day will be accepted by the whole world. God forbid. How could he if he doesn't exist? Now, don't interrupt me. I am playing at capitalism and counting my assets. I am healthy and I can have women when I want them. Except for you. But I don't want women except for you. I don't want to see my wife. I don't feel anything for the socialist revolution anymore. What do I do about this? Has this holiday helped at all? Yes. I feel more relaxed. I feel that I would like to stay here indefinitely. With nothing more important to do than to spend the time with you. Would you like to take a trip to one of the other islands tomorrow? I'd like to think about it. Now I really must go in. Thank you for a lovely evening. I am surprised about one thing. Why haven't you suggested that I come over to your side? Wouldn't the West want me? Probably. But I doubt it would work for you. No. I believe you are a neutral. You don't want converts. No. And I don't want to be converted either. I very much believe in being free to choose. You know something? You have forgotten about the group, Captain. Isn't that so? Tomorrow, I think I'd like to go and look for that tamarind tree. All right. What will you say if we don't find it? What will you say if we do? Good night. Oh, my dear. I'll ring you next week. Good night, sir. Thank you again. Thank you for coming. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Take care, the two of you. Rachel may not be the brightest lady in the world, but she's very sweet. I'm glad you like her. It'll help Richard. Not unless he stops playing around with that little piece he's got in London. Oh, come on, Fergus. Stop trying to look as if you didn't know. That bloodhound load has been checking up on him. The children's holidays will be starting in 10 days. They'll be needing some more pocket money. Whoever told you about Loder's investigation had no right to do so. <laughs> it was rather naughty of it. I want to know who it is. Why, you'd only get him into trouble. I'd make sure he never gave away another confidential report. Darling, it wasn't anything important. Just a little affair. Men are always having them. And after all, it was a woman he was sleeping with. I've no interest in what, what Patterson does with his private life. My only interest is in seeing that security amongst our staff is held to a maximum. If you go to Loder and start stirring up trouble, he might find out things about me you wouldn't want him to know. I suppose you have thought about that. Yes. Oh, well, please yourself. Now, if you don't mind, I'm very tired and I'd like a good night's sleep for a change. Good night. I wonder what Loder would do if he found out that our distinguished minister was queer. How can an intelligent woman like you even think of such nonsense? Shall I tell you the truth? There was no tamarind tree. There was no innocent slave. 
There is no force outside this world which gives justice to the weak. There is nothing but man. And the standards are not consistent. One year you are right about a certain thing, the next year it has become a crime. The truth is there are no standards, only expediencies. That's the most cynical statement I've ever heard. What would happen if you talk like that at home? It would depend. Two years ago it would have caused no comment, but the wind changes, the weather vane turns. That is what ideology is. A weather vane which is subject to the wind of expediency or of whim. <laughs> there was an empress of Russia who made it high treason to wear pink. Did you know that? It was her favorite color. Some people in your Western world feel the same about someone with a, with a red tie. None of it makes sense. In a way, that is the glory of materialism. It teaches you in the end to despise everything that is material. And leaves you nothing of value. Survival. That is the only end worth living for. To live, because afterward there is nothing, no reward for the good, no punishment for the evil. I don't believe that. If you simplify it, it's just absolute selfishness, and I don't think that makes anybody happy. You think I am selfish? Well, no, you, you philosophize one way and you act another. Basically, you're a very kind, generous man. Kind and generous to you, perhaps. Uh, well, perhaps because I hope to get something out of it. I see, thanks. <laughs> you believe me. You are very gullible. Your group captain told you he loved you and you believed him. I tell you I do something because I want to go to bed with you and you believe me. We are both liars. How are you going to survive if you can't tell the difference between one lie and another? I'm really worried about you. I asked you not to keep mentioning Richard. I should never have told you about him. It was very stupid of me. <laughs> you don't know how charming it is to find an intelligent woman who does stupid things. Tell me something. Are you as sad about your lover as you were when we first met? Does it really hurt when I talk about him? No. No, it doesn't. It seems less real here, but I don't want to go back. It will be easier than you expect. You will think of me instead of him. You're sure? We will meet in London, if we are very discreet. She is booked on a flight due back Friday. She obviously likes him, but if it takes going to bed with her to recruit her, so far he hasn't succeeded. It's possible his trip to Barbados is just a coincidence. Oh, it's possible. But you don't think very likely. I think it's best to be very careful. Thank you. You know, she's Sam Nielsen's assistant, and she's Group Captain Patterson's mistress. I thought the affair with Patterson was finished. If Comrade Sverdlov persuades her to go over, I don't think she'll have much trouble starting it up again. You think there's a chance she might go over? Sir, my line of business has taught me three things. No one's to be trusted, nothing is to be believed, and anyone is capable of doing anything. You know, about three years ago, Mrs. Farrell lost her husband in a car crash. She was just getting over that when she met Group Captain Patterson. Well, knowing the gallant Group Captain, it's not hard to guess what happened. And a very unhappy young woman took herself off to Barbados in search of whatever it is that young women are in search of. A twice damaged little plum just ripe to fall into the hands of a man like Sverdlov. My wife knows you've been investigating Patterson and Mrs. Farrow. She wouldn't tell me who told her. Uh, well, I'll have to look into that. It's a man. A security leak like that could be dangerous. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Well, you can count on my discretion, sir. Thank you, Mr. Lobo. Perhaps we could have dinner some evening. Oh, yes, sir. I'd like that very much, thank you. I'll call you. Right, fine, sir. Thank you, I'll, uh, I'll look forward to that. Miserable bitch. 
There's not many men who'd have told me that. Yeah, I suppose so. I've given him my word that I'll handle this as discreetly as possible. Of course. You understand? Right. Whoever it is that's sleeping with his wife and passing confidential information is liable to find himself in serious trouble if he's not careful. Aye. Who do you think it is? Watch the road. How long have you known? Not long. I swear, you tell the lady you won't be seeing her anymore and keep your trap shut. Or I'll have your bloody head on a stick, you understand? Yes, sir. Will you meet me in London? I don't know. It's been so simple here and uncomplicated. Can we wait and see how we feel when we get back to work? If I must. You are sure you don't want me to take you to the airport? No, thank you. Open it when you are on the plane. All right. Goodbye, Dushinka. Goodbye. Thank you. Settle now that Rachel's here too. She loves Paris. Everyone's been so kind to her, especially your wife. And Rachel adores her. Margaret's very fond of Rachel. I had a couple of postings myself when Margaret couldn't join me, and I remember I got very lonely and rather bored, especially in the evenings. I expect you did too. When you first arrived. Yes, it was hellish lonely. And also, to be honest, things were uncertain between Rachel and me at that time. She didn't want to be uprooted from England, and I cared about this posting too much to give it up. I'm afraid I made rather a fool of myself. I understand you became friendly with a girl in London. May I ask how you know about that? I'm afraid not. I can probably guess. The security check was run on me. I suppose I should have expected it. I find it just as nauseating as you do. The whole idea of spying and playing peeping Tom on our own staff. But none of us is exempt from it, if that's any consolation to you. Well, I've got to say to you, Richard, simply this. We don't want any scandal from the embassy point of view. I mean, your wife is having a baby, and the ambassador is rather strict about that kind of thing. But apart from that, what's really important, this girl you've been with, she's now a security risk. Security? That's impossible. I don't believe it. Oh, I think that's hardly relevant. I don't believe half the things security tells me either, but I have to accept that word and act accordingly. If you've anything more to do with her, you'll be recalled. I have to have your assurance. Nothing in writing, just uh, your word. Of course, I'll never see her or communicate with her again. We had, in fact, broken off about three weeks ago. Well, I hope this unpleasantness hasn't ruined your game.
accident had been copied out and assembled in the blue file. Yes, General. I must go. I have an appointment with the Hungarian ambassador. You will stay here until the prints are ready. I want the blue file on my desk tomorrow morning at night. Yes, General. It's all about Barbados, Mrs. Farron. Nice weather. Yes, marvellous. Meet anyone interesting? You know very well that I did. That's why you're here, isn't it? He said you people would come around. I'd be glad if you'd tell us exactly what happened. What's this man's name? You did say he, didn't you, Mrs. Farrow? His name is Feodor Sverdlov, and he's a military attaché at the Soviet Embassy. Did he make friends with anyone else beside you? No, we spent the time together. As far as I know, he didn't speak to anyone else. Mm -hmm. Sounds as if you got on very well. Yes, I like him very much. You don't say. You know how well we got on, and I'm sure you know exactly when we went swimming and where we went to dinner and what we ate. So why don't you just get to the point? The point, Mrs. Farrow, is that you can't expect to pick up a senior Soviet official like Colonel Sverdlov, and not set the cat among the pigeons. Oh, I've done nothing wrong. I mean, I met a man staying at the same hotel. I liked his company, and I presume he liked mine. You work for a man in a very important position. Sam Nielsen deals with a lot of highly confidential stuff. You think for one minute that now, I... Now, you're a very attractive young woman, don't misunderstand me, but don't you think it's a bit odd, this man choosing you out of the whole island he couldn't possibly have had another motive besides just being friendly on a holiday. Well, you're absolutely wrong. I mean, I, I know what you're getting at, but it's not true. He's going to contact you again, isn't he? Yes, perhaps, but not to recruit me. I mean, that's what you're trying to infer, isn't it? Did you sleep with him? How dare you ask me that? I'll ask you what I bloody well like. You work for one man in a confidential post, and you've been having it off with another. Oh, yes, we know all about Group Captain Patterson. Did you tell your Russian boyfriend about him, too? Yes, I did. Oh, for Christ's sake, you're a gift to them. Now, you listen to me very carefully, Mrs. Farrow. He'll get in touch with you again. And when he does, you won't try to muck about. You'll come direct to me and tell me. You understand that? Immediately. They've baited a big hook to catch you. That means that there's something they want which must be within your capacity to give them. You know, I'm not saying you do it. But they don't play according to the rules. It's surprising what you can make a woman do when you've got a hold on her. Like blackmail. No, I've told you you're wrong. You're so wrong, it's ridiculous. I mean, he'd never do anything like that. I, I know him. Do you? I doubt that, Mrs. Farrell. I doubt that very much. Well, you just forget this little meeting, go back to work, <clears throat> see your friends do whatever you normally do, and uh, when he contacts you, you get in touch with me at that number. Now, you'll do that, won't you? You won't do anything silly like seeing Sverdlov and not telling us. If you're right and he tries to involve me in anything, I will tell you at once. But I will not be used to spy on him. Nothing you can say would make me do a thing like that. Fair enough. Goodbye, Mrs. Farrell. Thanks for talking to me. Oh, and uh, not a word about this to anyone. Just keep it in the family. Bye, Mrs. Farrell. Thanks again. She put up quite an argument, didn't she? Yes. I think we're too late. I think that bastard's got to her already. I wouldn't trust a bloody word she said. Thank you. 
How are you? Anna Skryabina, Comrade Sviedlov. Where is Kalinin? Why are you in his office? He is sick. I'm a temporary replacement. I hope you'll find me satisfactory, Comrade. I'll do my best. What is wrong with Kalinin? I don't know, Comrade. Do you know where he is? No, Comrade. I was only told he was sick, nothing else. All right. I see there was a meeting between the ambassador and the Czechoslovakian charge. I don't see a full report in my papers. Do you know where it is? It, it should be there, comrade. There is a report, comrade. I'm sorry it was not in its proper place. It is not a good policy to make a mistake on your first morning. But as you are only temporary, I will overlook it. I will call you when I need dictation. Please bring me some tea. Yes, comrade. Kalinin was showing signs of strain. It was reported by several people that he didn't sleep at night and he was drinking. Did you know that, comrade? No. I became alarmed in your absence, knowing he had access to quite a lot of confidential information. So I decided to have him medically examined. He was diagnosed as both physically and emotionally unqualified to continue his work here. So we decided to send him home to recuperate. It was invaluable to me. I feel somewhat responsible. Perhaps I worked him too hard. That was the doctor's opinion. If you are not satisfied with Anna Scrivina, I can have a replace. Bear man, if you prefer. She does very well. It may be that I shall keep her permanently. I have seen the reports that you compiled during those two weeks, including that very interesting contribution from Blue. I wonder who recruited Blue. I've heard it said that it was you, comrade. I don't even know his identity. Nobody knows that except Panyushkin. That's the measure of Blue's importance. Nobody else who worked for us has been so well protected. A very wise precaution. Now, to change the subject, but not the object. I have had some luck on my trip to Barbados. I have made a very useful contact. I met a woman on the island. She has a very confidential job at the Home Office in London. I believe that I will be able to recruit her. That could be very useful. Is she attractive? Very. Well, then your task should not be too unpleasant. On the contrary, Mrs. Farrow is as charming as she is beautiful. I am looking forward to our relationship with the greatest of pleasure. Thank you. Would you like a drink? Yes, I would. What would you like? I think just a glass of white wine, please. And the vodka, please. You look different from when we were on the island. Very competent, very efficient. Is that a criticism? No. If I said I prefer you in a bikini, is that a criticism? I guess not. Don't you like me in my business suit? I'm not sure. You must give me time to get used to it. I am surprised by one thing. You're not wearing a red tie. Oh, I'm in disguise. I'm a Russian spy. Didn't you realize that? You were right about my visitors. I was met at the airport. Oh, I am sorry. Tell me what happened. Oh, there was a man who drove me back to my flat. And there was another man who did the interrogating called Mr. Loder. He said you would get in touch with me again, and I was to let him know immediately when you did. I see. And have you done that? Have you let him know that we are together? No. Did he say anything else? Oh, just the usual about my mixing with Russians, my job being confidential. You can imagine the kind of thing. Only too well. Now I will fill in what you have decided not to tell me. He said I was a dangerous Soviet agent and that I was only interested in you because I hoped to recruit you as a spy. 
You know, it is charming to see a woman blush like that. You must never try to lie to me. I can see straight through you, like glass. Is that what you think? Do you believe him? Thank you. No, I wouldn't be here if I did. It's not true, is it? <laughs> no. What a bad interrogator you would make. You stare into my eyes to see if I'm lying. Well, people can lie with their eyes. I am telling you the truth. I am not going to seduce you and persuade you or blackmail you into telling me what your Mr. Nielsen says to the Prime Minister. Although I have told my own people that I would do this. You've told your own people? Yes. I told them that I hope to recruit you to work for us. That way I can meet you whenever I want, without suspicion. Oh, I don't know what to do. This whole thing is getting so out of proportion. The first thing that you must do is to inform your intelligence man that we have been together. Otherwise, you could be in great trouble. Let me teach you the first lesson about these little games. You must try to tell the truth as long as possible. That way, when times change and you have to lie, there's a great chance that you will be believed. You said yourself I'm a bad liar. <laughs> Never mind. I will teach you. I am a great expert. You say the most extraordinary things. Why should I believe a word you've said when you boasted you can lie like a trooper? Like what? A trooper? Oh, it's just an expression. It doesn't mean anything, really. Besides, I'm not going to lie to anyone. If I choose to see you, that's my business. No, oh, I'll tell them we've seen each other and that I was right and they were wrong. I won't believe you. You will be followed and watched. Do as I tell you. Play that game for them. Then we can have our evenings together. And maybe a weekend. No weekends. Then we must go to a nice dark place where I can dance with you. You behave too badly. I don't behave badly. You won't let me. One dance. thinking about that dull Englishman. How did you know? When I first saw you, you had a look on your face. It was uh, not happy. You have the same look now. I'm sorry. Why don't you become a communist and come back to Russia with me? Well, offhand, I can think of several reasons. And they are? Your wife, for one. I must admit, that is a consideration. And red really doesn't suit me. I refuse to believe it. Politically, you see, I'm true blue. True blue? What is that? Is it a political joke? No, to some people it's quite serious. It's used to describe the heroes of Victorian novels, people very loyal to the Queen and the Empire, that kind of thing. <laughs> That's funny. True blue, I must remember that. Blue face, a cat face. Hello, show me, Mitya. How are you? Hello. This is Mr. Memiono and Miss Mitchell, Mrs. Farrow. Please sit down. Mr. Memiono is with our embassy here. His English is not very good. I'm sorry, I only speak little. <laughs> I hope you don't mind if we speak Russian. Oh, please. 
Business. Do you speak Russian? No. I can understand a few words, but that's all. Do you? No, I gather it's a very difficult language to learn. Yeah. I had a girlfriend once who learned to speak fluent French in a month. Mind you, she lived with a Frenchman. Sounds like a practical system. Well, not necessarily. When I met Dimitri, I thought, ah, here's a good chance to learn Russian. But then I found out he had the same idea. He wanted to learn English. Well, you could swap, speak Russian one week and English the next. No, we're both too stubborn for that. Oh, we get on pretty well, but we fight a lot. I know some great Russian swear words. And hello and goodbye and that kind of thing. But six months, no, seven, that's it. Do you smoke? No, thank you. I wish I didn't. Dimitri smokes like a truba. Like a what? Oh, that's a chimney. Excuse. Goodbye. It has been pleasure. Oh, just remember, if you're considering the system, seven months and truba. I'll remember. Truba, that means a... Chimney. Yes. They have a problem. He wants to learn English and she wants to learn Russian. Oh, I don't think he wants her for talking. She is good at other things and harmless. We know all about her. She likes presents, not money, so that she can show her friends how good she is with men. And how does a good Soviet socialist get the money to buy her all those presents? Sounds like a lot of capitalism to me. I give him the money. I pay his expenses because he is a good man and loyal to me. He does what I tell him. I told him to do something for me now, and I know he will do it. What is it? He is going back to Russia on Wednesday. I told him to find out about my secretary, who was supposed to have been taken ill while I was in Barbados. He was sent home. You have a male secretary? Yes, they are more efficient than girls. But I have a girl now. I suspect that she is a plant. She is there to report on me. Why? I'm not sure yet. There are many things about myself that I might tell you someday. And there are many people who don't agree about those things. In any case, don't worry. I will find out and do what is necessary. Would you like to dance again? No, oh, thank you. I have frightened you. Oh. Would you like me to take you home? Yes. Listen to me a minute. This is all getting too complicated. I mean, your people watching you and mine going after me and... Well, I'm just not prepared to see you and let you think that I'm eventually going to sleep with you because I'm not. You don't wish to see me again? I think it's better that I don't. to sleep with you. You can stop crying. I'll be outside your office at lunchtime tomorrow. 
I'm at the airport. No, I've lost him. Right, right. I find it quite revolting. You and that dreadful man lunching together. Has he found out? Has he told you who it is this time? He's never even mentioned your friend. I'm sure he'll do everything he can to protect you in every way. So you don't need to worry. Oh, I'm not worried. You're the one who should be worried. You're the one who looked the fool. Dodo will never involve us in any sort of scandal. Whatever you may think of him, he's a decent man. I've got to know, and I like him. Oh, really? Don't tell me, darling. He's not one of those. Have a nice lunch. Et maintenant, information routière sur la nationale 5, circulation normale de bout en bout. Ce n'est pas toujours le cas, comme les automobilistes le savent. À Paris, sur les boulevards périphériques, circulation dense, mais assez rapide. Dans les quartiers voisinants l'Opéra, gros embouteillage. Et maintenant, revenons à George? Yes? Don't give me any rubbish about not phoning you at the office. I haven't heard from you for nearly a week and I demand an explanation. I suppose your boss has found out about us, is that it? Aye, that's it. I gather we won't be seeing one another anymore. Right? Right. It arrived this morning in the diplomatic bag. It was a personal letter from Igor Tomarov, who had known him since his marriage and was a witness at the wedding. It enclosed the official document notifying him that his wife Elena had applied to the courts for a divorce. A short time later, Comrade Sviatlov instructed me to make arrangements for his flight to Moscow on Thursday the 25th. Comrade Sviatlov then called Mrs. Farrow and made an appointment to meet her this afternoon in London. Look, if you don't love your wife and you want her to divorce you, then why are you going back to try and stop her? My wife is an important woman from an important family. If she divorces me, it would be politically very dangerous for me. Oh, I didn't realize you were so ambitious. <laughs> I'd like to stay alive. You're joking. A little, but not completely. You see, after Stalin, people stopped talking about annihilating one half of the world as a way of spreading communism. There was more freedom, more moderation. I worked for that. I believed in it, and I still do. But now a lot of Elena's father's disciples are in power, and they are trying to change things back to the old ways. Then why don't you get out? Why don't you just get off the plane in Europe and disappear? Because I am a Russian, and I don't want to be exiled from my country. So I am going on Thursday. I hope to be back in ten days or less, and then I will telephone you. The question is, how long will the bastard string her along before he tries to pull her in? This whole thing, I don't like to feel it, but it's dirty. No, oh, I can't help feeling sorry for her. It's dirty, all right, but we didn't invent it, did we? And the consequences of a thing like this can be very big. Well, this morning, they've been on the phone from London. I've got a fly back. They're in a hell of a flap. I don't know, it could be for this. Think it'll be gone long? I shouldn't think so. Fly over, get briefs, come back again. Yeah. 
house. A lighter seemed to have left it at home. She came back to her house at seven. No, no, he wasn't with her. No, they haven't talked with each other and she's made no other phone calls. Looks like she's in for the evening. All right. I should be back in Paris tomorrow. If anything startling turns up, you know where to reach me. Bye. I'm disturbing you. Not at all. But I got this call from Dimitri Menmenyov. Do you remember Dimitri? Yes, I do. Well, he's in Amsterdam at the moment on a two-week trip. And he asked me to get in touch with you because he gave me a message for your friend, Colonel Sverdlov. Yes. Ah, oh, no, I can't give it to you. I was asked to write it down, but I've got to burn it. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I really, you know... Well, I understand. Please read it to me. OK. Kalinin is in the Lubyanka. They're waiting for you. On no account, let them persuade you to return to Russia. That's it. I hope I'm not disturbing you. I seem to have lost something. A lighter. You haven't seen it, have you? I said I lost something. I don't suppose you found it. Looks like a lighter, doesn't it? it? Even has an inscription from your loving wife. Since I haven't loved you for years, and I didn't give it to you in the first place, I was naturally rather curious. It took me quite a long while to work it out. I tried unscrewing it, so it's probably broken. So you won't be able to take any more photographs, will you? secretly. What kind of filth are you mixed up? Filth. You wouldn't understand it. You wouldn't know an ideal if you saw one. Ideal? Ideal. An ideology for the betterment of humanity. I've believed in it for a long time. You can call it filth if you want to. Or treason or anything else treason. that comes to mind. My God, what have you been doing? Nobody's paying me. The Russians, is that it? Why, you pervert, they It's not blackmail. I'm not being forced to do anything I don't want to. I believed in this ever since I came up from Cambridge. Believed in what? I became a communist long before I met you. My God, you dirty little... You get out, you get out of my room! What else? What else have I got to find out? What else do I have to be told? Someone might hear me. Yes, somebody might hear me. Stop it, stop it. Bloody, you stop it. filthy, 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 bloody... You 
I've been trying to reach you for hours. Can you talk? Yes, but if it's something important, be careful. It's terribly important. I've had a message from your friend Dmitry Memenov. Careful. I know it is much to ask, but is it possible for you to come here? Yes. I will meet you at the airport. Take the next available plane. And be calm. There is nothing so tragic that we cannot work it out. Trust me, Dushinka. Do you know what that word means? Yes, I asked a translator at the office. It means darling. <laughs> I will see you in a few hours. Goodbye, Dushinka. Check and see if Lorda's on that plane yet. to Paris to see your lover. Are we being watched? Of course. Uh, what a wonderful surprise. I didn't expect to see you again until I got back from Russia. I don't think you would have returned from Russia. Tell me more about it on the way to the hotel. Hotel? Well, you don't expect me to take you to the Russian embassy. Mr. Loder would never believe another word you told him. The message was, Karlinin is in the Lubyanka. They are waiting for you. On no account let them persuade you to return to Russia. Karlinin is my secretary. Are you sure about that? Are you sure it was the Lubyanka? Oh, yes. Lubyanka is a prison, isn't it? It is an interrogation center for the KGB. They took Karlinin over there to manufacture evidence against me. By now, they must have got it. So my old friend writes to me to persuade me to come back. And my own wife agrees to divorce me. You see, I have become corrupted. I have fallen in love with a degenerate capitalist. And I have acquired a taste for Scotch whiskey. That alone proves that I have lost my Marxist soul. Oh, stop it. You're in terrible danger. If you go back, you're going to be arrested. <laughs> I can cancel my trip and rebook for later. I can say that I have succeeded in recruiting you and that you have a tremendous secret for me. Now, don't look so sad. They won't get me, I promise you. Yes? Richard, this is Judith. Richard? Yes. Uh, wait a minute. Let me get you another phone. Judy, for God's sake. Uh, I'm sorry, Richard. I didn't want to call you, but Loda's out of town, and you're the only one I know that could help with this. At the Raphael, 721. All right, I'll be there as soon as I can. Listen to me, Fergus. You've already destroyed part of my life. You're not going to ruin the rest. Oh, I remember you telling me about your sordid little boyfriend, your Cambridge love affair. Well, I put up with that. All that. And now, now, with the children nearly grown, our future assured and all those boring postings finished, in line for a grade one embassy. I think you're going to ruin it all. I could destroy you. I don't think I wouldn't enjoy seeing you go to jail for the rest of your life. I'd enjoy seeing you hang. But I'm 
tied to you. So, you're not going to say anything about it? I spent my life helping your career. I want that embassy. I want it for myself, not you. And I'm going to get it. Because you're going to stop what you've been doing. You'll get caught. I caught you out. And that means you're getting careless. It won't be easy. But I promise I'll try. Oh, you'll do better than that. You'll do exactly as I say. By God, one way or another, Fergus, I'll destroy you. Who is it, then? I can't tell you that. Well, you've no right to drag me up here. I'm not at all anxious to get involved in this. And if it's some bloody clerk filling ink bottles... Oh, it's no, a... it's nothing of the kind. This man is in very great danger, and he wants political asylum. Richard, it honestly couldn't wait until tomorrow. I had to call the house. What exactly is it that your friend wants? He wants to know whether the British will receive him and whether they will promise not to hand him back to his own embassy. I can't answer those questions on my own authority. I'd have to go back and refer the whole thing to the ambassador. Well, you could tell the ambassador that this man would be a very valuable acquisition to Britain. But if you can't give me his name, I don't see how I can back that up. What section is he in? Can you tell me that? Military. <laughs> that could mean anything. Why can't you trust me? It's all so damn vague otherwise. Well, I told you all I can. Look, Richard, I know you're a great stickler for the rules, but if you tie this thing up in red tape, it'll be too late to help him. I'm not interested in helping him. I came here in case it would be a help to us. Oh, no. Well, there's always the odd unreliable who's willing to sell himself to the highest bidder just because he's in trouble with his own side and wants to avoid the consequences. Oh, Christ, I never thought I'd want to see that monster loader, but I'd give anything to have him here instead of you. Then I suggest that you and your friend just wait until Loder gets back. Now, you listen to me. If you can't help me, then you put someone with authority onto me direct. Beyond that, you don't have to get involved. Sounds as if you've got yourself into a pretty scruffy mess. No scruffier than the last time. I'll call you tomorrow. He will go to his ambassador and say, Sir, I have a most important Russian officer who wishes to come over to our side. It will go down in his record and he will be happy. But he won't deal with me himself and I will be happy about that because I don't like him. No, neither do I. Which means that I am very determined not to make the same mistake twice. I am determined about that also. Then take me back to the airport. Well, if we don't spend the night together, how am I going to convince General Golitsyn that I'm succeeding with you? If we do spend the night together, then I shall lose my job at the Home Office. And then I don't think General Gollitson would be interested in whether you succeeded with me or not. You are a very difficult woman. Tell the General that. This is what I have to expect if I come over to the West. Then I'm better off dead. Major? I'm going to entrust a very delicate matter to you on behalf of General Panushkin. I am at your disposal, General. The orders come from Panushkin himself. I'm only following instructions. Pick two men, two men whom you can trust completely. Trust as you would trust yourself, as I trust you. Have them watch Colonel Sverdlov. He is under suspicion from the Presidium. I am sorry to hear that. You will report to me and no one else. Panushkin has placed this matter in my hands. Sverdlov is due to return to Russia soon. If anything happens to alert him before he goes, I shall hold you responsible, Major. You understand? I understand, General. There's a woman involved with him, a Mrs. Farrell. She works for Mr. Nielsen at the Home Office. If Sverdlov succeeds in recruiting her, it would be very important for us. You wanted to see me, Mrs. Farrell?
I hear the Brazilian minister's on the point of resigning. Uh -huh. That's the rumor. I imagine you find that sort of thing interesting. Not especially. Don't you pick up all these little scraps of gossip first so you can tell your friends? No. You just involve yourself in top-level stuff, I suppose. That's right. <laughs> Listen, Fergus, I wasn't kidding. If you don't get out of this... What do you do, Margaret? Turn me in? Ruin us both? I don't think so. Colonel, what do you want? Political asylum. The usual guarantees, lifetime security, but not in England. Canada. Uh, could I bother you for a... Uh, thank you very much. It's just uh, gin and a drop of water. Well, that could present complications, Colonel. You could be a big embarrassment to Anglo-Soviet relations. I'm not coming empty-handed. No? What are you going to bring with you? Always supposing we're prepared to offer you hospitality. One piece of information. One? What? Thank you. What? One item? Is that what you're offering? Oh, come off it, Colonel. Nobody's going to wear that. I wouldn't waste my chief's time making the suggestion. Oh, he'd just tell you to get stuffed. What do you want, Mr. Loder? The names of a dozen expendable agents, the key to a code which would be changed within 24 hours after I've gone, or information about who is betraying Western top security methods at this moment. The reason you were called back to London so suddenly. Hello? Yes. Mr. Loder? Two men who followed you are across the street. I cancelled my trip to Moscow. Golitsyn isn't taking any chances. Do you think he suspects what you're doing? I think he believes I need more time to recruit Mrs. Farrow, but he is a cautious man. He wants to make very sure that nothing happens which will prevent me from returning to Russia. Are you sure you can deliver? I will make, uh, what do you call it? A deposit for the full payment. He has a code name. Blue. I will give you the blue file when I'm on the plane for Canada. Right. You give us blue. And we'll see you safe and snug for the rest of your life. How do you want to do it? I will make my arrangements and tell Mrs. Farrow. I believe she knows how to get in touch with you. Okay, get on. Uh, there's another little problem. It won't help matters if your two friends out there see me leave this house. Well, 
Mrs. Farrow and I will take a walk and draw them off. All right? Yes. You look very worried. Really, I can't think why. And you have not been sleeping. I think that you are in love with me. Well, you think wrong. No, I am worried. I haven't had a beast night's sleep since this thing started, but I think I'd feel that way for anybody I really liked. You will tell me the truth when we get to Barbados. Barbados? I'm taking you there to complete your seduction. I have explained that you are a very difficult woman who won't work for us unless I make love to you under the palm trees. Why Barbados? I mean, it's, it's such a small island and anything could happen there. You think I would be safer in Paris? Barbados is British. Mr. Loder will be able to protect me there. Will you come? Yes, if that's a way to help you, of course I'll come. We go back now. I'm sure Lode is gone, and I'm suddenly very cold. It is important that they think that I'm succeeding with you. Well, that's taking unfair advantage. You knew I wouldn't stop you. I only know that you didn't kiss me as if you wanted me to stop. I do sit down. Yeah. Come on, put your feet up. Oh. You sure you don't want me to call Dr. Alton? No, no. It's please. all right, Richard. I'll look after her. Now, you and Fergus go back and tell the ambassador there's nothing to worry about. I'll get you a glass of water. I've never fainted in my life. <laughs> You've never been pregnant before. Oh, come on. Pregnant ladies often feel faint. No, it, it isn't that. It... Here, come on. Now, what is it? Oh, Mrs. Stevenson, I'm so miserable, I just don't know what to do. Well, perhaps it would help if you talk about it. It's Richard, another woman. Just can't trust him. Ever since that woman rang the other night, everything's changed. It's always been difficult. I never thought he was after other women. Now I can't think of anything else. She phoned him. In the middle of the night, she said she had to see him, that someone important in the Russian embassy wanted to defect. How is she? Oh, she's fine. She's just lying down. Wrong. I 
just heard something that makes me want to throw up. Could you please make our excuses so we can get out of here and talk about it? What are you going to do? I haven't stopped. Supposing he's already told them who you are? He hasn't. Might have been arrested by now if he had. These things take time. It could be weeks before he comes over. If you don't know who he is, how can you have him stopped? The woman who called Patterson about the defector was probably his former mistress, Judith Farrow. The English bitch who's been sleeping with the Russian. Colonel Fyodor Svetlov. There's nothing I can do about it until the morning. Why morning? I've just one means of communication. And it's only available to me during the day, between nine and five. Good morning, General. Can I get you some tea, coffee? No, thank you. I have come to a crisis with Mrs. Farrell. What a pity. I thought she was committed. She will be committed when she brings her first report. But I'm afraid she still has a little bridge to cross. The one from her side to ours. She is feeling in a romantic mood at the moment. I shall have to take a few days and help her cross that little bridge. Well, as I remember, seduction can have its compensations. Another time I might enjoy it, but I have had to cable my wife and ask her to wait again. I understand. It's, it's difficult to choose. I choose my duty. Of course. There is no question of which has the first priority. This woman has access to the most confidential report about everything Nielsen does at the Home Office. She could be one of our most important agents over here, perhaps as important as Blue. If I let her go now and take time to attend to my personal business, we could lose her. A few days to convince her that she is doing it for love, and then a controller can look after her for a week or two. Have you decided who is to take over in your absence? It might be dangerous to keep her uncontacted, even for a few days. Do you have a man in mind? What about Gregory Stukalov? I will leave that to you. You and Stukalov will be responsible for keeping her while I'm away. If she likes Stukalov, then he can take over from me completely. But one should never hurry these things. Oh, patience is needed. I hope you'll be able to persuade Elena Maximova to forget about the divorce. She's a fine woman. It would be a pity to lose her. Oh, I don't intend to lose her. As soon as I have recruited Mrs. Farrow, I should be on my way to see my wife. If everything goes well, I should be seeing you in a few days. Good luck, Anna.
taking the afternoon plane for Barbados. We'll be staying at the Beach Hotel St. James. Well, he wants to get out as quickly as possible. Do you think you can make the arrangements in time? Oh, bloody well have to, won't I? Is that all he said? Oh, he'll have the documents with him. All right. I'll get him out of Barbados on the Saturday plane. Now, listen. Tell him there'll be protection laid on at the hotel, but stay there, you understand? Don't take any chances. Just stay there till our chaps come and get you out. Yes, I'll tell him. You're not thinking of leaving Barbados with him, are you? That's not on. I'm just warning you. I'm only going to Barbados because he needs me as an alibi. I have no intention of going on to Canada. I'd like to hear it. Yes, I thought you would be. <laughs> Find out if Colonel Sverdlov has left the embassy. If not, detain him. Under no circumstance, allow him to leave the building. According to Blue, Sverdlov intends to defect. He is tricked by using the simplest of all intelligence maxims. If you want to elude the pursuer, do it in broad daylight, with as many people around as possible. We shall get him in London. You are told to watch and report every word, every movement. But Comrade, I did, but... Get up.
say to me, please? Just a moment, sir. What's that? Oh, sir, it looks like a gun to me. Hey, just a moment. Oh, uh, that's quite all right, sir. Major, one way or another, you will stop Colonel Sverdlov before he delivers the blue file. But what if he's already... He would be a fool if he gave them the file before they fulfilled their part of the agreement. And as I seem to have all the fools on my side, you may still have a few hours to redeem yourself. Charter a plane. Take as many men as you need. Intercept Colonel Sverdlov in Barbados. And take full responsibility for this action. I cannot wait for official sanctions from Panushki. So if you fail, Major, we all fail. Therefore, I don't have to point out the consequence of such a possibility. They're both on the island under close security. If everything goes according to plan, he'll be in Ottawa Sunday, and the Canadian boys can take it from there. Congratulations. Wow. Normally, I hate doing business with his sort, but if the blue file is all he claims, it'll be worth it. Blue file? Code name for their top agent here in Paris. I'm almost onto him now. Almost onto him. I just hope the alley doesn't turn out to be British. <laughs> when will you know? Sverdlov will hand the file over once he's tucked up nice and safe in Canada, so I should think this is Blue's last weekend to enjoy himself. <laughs> to Blue's last weekend. like to swim. Loda said you were not to go away from the bungalow. I know, but I am a man and I want you. And if I can't have you, then I must occupy myself with some pleasant distraction which will keep my frustration to a minimum. Has it ever occurred to you that I might be slightly frustrated myself? Then come to bed with me. Or oh, come swimming.
so far, no record of any private flights to Barbados. One flight plan was filed by a jet charter service, five male passengers, destination St. Vincent. That's about 100 miles. We're checking it out. How are the lovebirds doing? No problems yet. Well, keep your eyes on them. Right. OK. The man who chartered the flight lives in Paris and he's a big dealer in foreign stamps. The other four men are listed on the company's board of directors. No one at the jet charter service thought there was anything unusual. Just uh, businessmen off to the Caribbean for a week's fishing. Mm, right. Well, so far it's quiet. Let's hope it stays that way. You know, you never talk about your, your husband. About your English lover, yes, but not your husband. Why not? I suppose because I feel guilty. Why guilty? What did you do? Well, that's more what I didn't do. For the last two years, I wasn't in love with him. Was he unhappy? No, as a matter of fact, he was very happy. He enjoyed everything he did. He was a most uncomplicated man. At least, that's what I kept telling myself afterwards, so he couldn't possibly have realized how little contact we had. Life was just one big party, one big laugh non-stop. Come to think of it, it was hell on earth after the first year. If he hadn't been killed, I would have left him. Well, you won't be allowed to leave me. You are the most persistent man I have ever met. <laughs> Let me ask you something. How do you feel about all this? Going into exile, running, hiding? Well, you see, I'm Russian. And we believe in fate. As a matter of fact, we invented it like, uh, like fairy stories. That way, if anything goes wrong, it is never our fault, it is fate. I am not glad I'm going with Mr. Loder. But I'm glad I'm not in Lubyanka right now. A lot of the people I worked with won't be so lucky. I would enjoy some more tea. That was Mr. McLeod. He reports that the plane will be here on time. We must leave for the airport at noon. I'm glad. There's a team. Thank you. It's him. Narayan Bangalore. The doors are open. Very careless. Yes? He won't stay in the bungalow. There's nothing I can do about it. He just won't. What? He's going out in a few moments to swim. Oh, it's all right, Mrs. Farrell. Don't worry. We'll look after him. I wish you wouldn't go. When I'm in Canada, Mr. Loder can treat me like a prisoner, but not before. Will you wait while I change? Of course. 
citizen burned to death. A Russian tourist registered as F. G. Sverdlov was the victim of a fire in the Bungalow Beach Hotel on the fashionable west coast of Barbados. Mrs. J. Farrow of London was rescued and was rushed to the hospital on the island. The cause of the fire is unknown, but it is thought to be due to an electrical fault. The bungalow was completely gutted and several of the surrounding buildings were severely damaged. I suppose you should be congratulated on a job well done. Will you get a bonus? I suggest you curb your aggressions until we're out of the woods. What do you mean? The traitor's dead. But did the blue file die with him? How will you find out? I'm having lunch with Loda. Will the, chi will the children be down this weekend? No, no, I blame myself entirely. It's a complete falls up on my part. You see, someone must have tipped them off. Huh? Oh, yeah. They were all set for him. You mean the fire wasn't an accident? No. Oh. There's nothing accidental about napalm, is there? No. Bad enough in the open, but in a confined space, well, just imagine. God, what a frightful thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't have a chance. And that's not the worst of it either. The blue file burns with him. That's too bad. Yeah. But what about Mrs. Farrow? Oh, she's lucky to be alive. She was upstairs. Our fellas managed to smash the window and get her out. I've got to fly over and see her now. I'm not looking forward to that, I can tell you. Well, you did your best. It wasn't your fault. No. Of course it wasn't. Wish I could be as sure. Um, 
Could you tell me where I'd find Mrs. Farrell, please? Um, she's on the lawn over there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, Mrs. Farrell. What do you want? They tell me you've made a great recovery. Going back to England next week. I'm bloody sorry the way things have turned out. Are you? Yes. For what it's worth. It's not worth much. wasn't any good, you know. Go away. I brought something for you. Where did you get this? He isn't dead, Mrs. Farrow. He's alive. In Canada. After you called McLeod and said he wouldn't stay undercover, we decided to pull him in. McLeod went in the back door and he managed to get Sverdlov out just a split second before the bomb exploded. to see him, it'll be arranged. Goodbye, Mrs. Farrell. How is she okay? From now on, I suspect her recovery will be nothing short of spectacular. Oh, by the way, when we get back, I want you to call Mrs. Stevenson. Start seeing her again. Find out if she knows that her husband's a, a Russian agent. Now that Stevenson thinks he's safe, we'll let him continue to operate. Just make sure he only passes on the kind of information we want them to have. And sooner or later, the Russians will twig. <laughs> oh, yeah, undoubtedly. They'll figure him for a double agent and kill him. Thus saving Her Majesty's government a great deal of expense and considerable embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> 